Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all having the best day ever. Thank you so much for clicking on my YouTube channel today and on my video today. I'm very grateful that you're choosing to spend even a little portion of your day with me. I'm filming this video at... It is currently midnight. I'm filming this video today. I wasn't planning on filming a video today, if I'm being completely honest with you, because it is today, one year, that I moved out um, from my family and, you know, to a different country on my own. It's one year of that today, and I'm having, like, a lot of flashback memories all day today of, like, moving day, which was, like, one of the the most exciting but one of the saddest days of my entire life um, and I'm getting all my snapchat like memories from it and stuff and so today I've just been like in bed feeling the emotions but something that'll always pull me out of bed is a good little manic rant from Trisha Paytas on social media and that's exactly what I got and that was enough to perk me right up and let me tell you, you did it so this is actually probably one of the longest like tangents, if you will, saying it in a polite way, Trisha has ever went on, on social media. So we're going to go through it, and there's one in particular that I want to focus on. She's responding to a hater, and she is just like the worst person in the entire world in this response, and it made me really angry. So I'm just going to go through Trisha's tweets, so if there's anything exciting attached with them other than just words, I will specify that, but for the most part, it's just tweets. So she said, Got back to meditating right when I wake up and before looking at my phone. It's really life-changing. Even 10 minutes of quiet time with no thoughts makes such a difference. It's like you're connected with the universe for the day and it's just doing one thing. Alright, okay, so that's the first one. So, this is obviously Trisha back in her meditation phase. It seems that maybe the ASMR phase is on the way out. Maybe the meditation one will be coming back, or maybe we'll be getting a merge of both ASMR meditation videos. Uh, we know that Trisha had a very spiritual, at least, content journey um, a couple months ago on a couple of her different YouTube channels, and that was something that very quickly and quietly got dropped. So it'll be interesting to see if that is what Trisha is going to be bringing back. Sorry, I'm just getting comfortable. This feels like a sleepover. I feel so informal filming videos in my fucking bed. And then she goes on, <laughs> and she says, the universe can work so fast. I really forgot how quickly things come around in our favor. Who's R? Is R like you and Moses, or is it like us, you and Moses, or is it just like me and you and not Moses, you know what I mean? And the muckers too. Who's us in that equation, Trisha? I really forgot how quickly things come, <laughs> these tweets have been up for three hours and have less than 50 likes. Trisha has nearly a million followers on Twitter. That engagement is shocking. Like, shocking. Like, YouTubers have talked about being shadow banned and stuff, but Trisha legitimately is. Why did my light just go off? That, oh. Perfect. That's the universe. That's the universe, baby. The universe is bringing me back from a dark place to a light place for you. The metaphor just playing out right now with my TV disconnecting. Um, so anyway, that's probably what Trisha's wanting the universe to do, shut off all electricity in drama channel households. So anyway, I just really want to show you this, but literally these tweets are getting like 50 likes and they've been up for a decent amount of time. It's just like Trisha's engagement is so <laughs> bad. Anyway, she goes on. I had paused on meditating for a few months, but I never paused on writing things down that I'm thankful for each day. The blessings always poured in, but it was a little hard managing mind meditation and it is the right thing. Or if you have BPD, a core treatment in DBT is so many duh, 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 is wise mind. Counting spaces in between your breaths. Highly recommend either technique to everyone who needs to gather themselves anxiety or feel overwhelmed. Alright, so now Trisha starts responding to actual people. So this is when it starts getting messy. Um, so someone responded to Trisha's tweet that said, so Trisha's tweet said, I will say being pregnant has forced me to relax and be kind to my body, is what Trisha says. I never feel guilty about resting or eating or taking time off. A lesson I'll take with me even when the baby is born. All humans need these basics, um, life things, and we should not feel guilty for 
having these such needs. And then someone responded, so this was one of the nice ones, and said, being kind to the body means giving it, and most importantly, the baby, proper nutrition. And then Trisha responds and says, AMEN, in all capitals. We have never been healthier. Praise God for this turnaround. So, then people are responding to Trisha saying, my week's been good, my manifestations are coming really strong. Trisha says, I love to hear this. So great. And then there is a tweet that I want to focus on right here. So I'm actually going to skip to it because it really has, like, it's so disgusting. But it was Trisha trying to respond to um, a hater. And she was trying to call someone out. Sorry, I'm trying to look for it here. I wonder if she's actually deleted it because it was really disgusting. Um, she might have actually deleted this, you guys. She might have actually deleted it. I think so, but... Oh, no, perfect, it's still here. Um, sorry, I was trying to find that. So, Trisha tweeted, I went to bed with stress, worry, and I didn't know the answers, right decisions to make. Uh, meditated with a clear mind, and it presented itself in two ways. An email that had all the answers I was worried about, and a creative offer that would leave me no time for what I was considering. So then someone said, you're per baby. Imagine having Trisha Paytas as a mother. So that was tweeted by someone called Sarah, and it has more likes than any of Trisha's tweets, and also what Trisha responds to this person with. So this is Trisha's response, which I think is very clearly condescending, very clearly a low blow, and just disgusting that Trisha would weaponize this, and that is what she's doing. She's literally weaponizing, um, like, D-R-E-G... S abuse um, against someone else whenever she will always talk about how you know hard that was whenever she was going through it so Trisha tweets back to this person who said imagine having Trisha Paytas as your mother Trisha says I see you're coming off D-R-U-G-S I applaud you for getting help with your problem methadone is not easy I really do pray for your recovery I know firsthand the demons that you're facing. You'll get through. You're in my prayers. Genuinely. Perhaps this was just a cry out. I see you. What I like... I'm so sorry, but like... To weaponize someone's D-R-E-G-S abuse against them, whatever... Listen, imagine having Trisha Paytas as your mother. Yeah, it's a rude tweet. But you're going to respond to their hate when saying that you've been above hate for so long, right? You respond to that with weaponizing one of their biggest um, struggles in life. Which is not only just like, alright, you could do that, you know, they're dissing on you. But you've also talked about how, you know, supportive you are of people going through that journey because you've gone through it yourself. Which again shows that everything you do is just a little song and dance performance for whatever you know, way and method you want to be talking or presenting yourself in that moment, whether it's on frenemies, caring about a lot of things that you've since dropped, um, whether it was when you were friends with Shane, caring about um, things then that you don't care about now, and vice versa. It's just, Trisha very much so always will morph her ideas of right and wrong surrounding what she is presented with, which was on frenemies with Ethan, with Shane, so, for example, she was always supportive of Shane's jokes and behavior, and then whenever she's not friends with Shane, she's against it, because she can profit from being against it, the same way she could profit from it whenever she was with Shane and friends with Shane, whenever he was doing this kind of stuff. With Ethan, doing all the jokes with Ethan, and then whenever she was without Ethan, it was all against Ethan. So, it's just within that moment, she will do anything, even if it contradicts every single thing she's ever done in her life, to just change, um how she presents herself, and here she's doing it by um, weaponizing someone's um, abuse against them. So, anyway. Um, she has other tweets, though, that we're going to get to. I did kind of skip ahead just because there was something that I really wanted to touch upon. Um, so, someone responded to Trisha's tweet and said, You're actually disgusting, Trisha. Trying to turn her sobriety into something to be ashamed of. At least she's dealing with her issues, which is more than I can say for you. And then Trisha responded to this person and got one like. So, literally, Trisha is, like, fighting a battle that everyone else is winning because 
everyone else's tweets to Trisha get so many more likes, it just seems that no one wants to hear her right, and again, whenever she's acting this way, I'm not fucking surprised. So Trisha said, not at all, I'm sober one year, 14 months, and 15 days. I've been on methadone, I know her anger isn't her, and she's struggling. I wish her nothing but the best. Her cry for help won't go ignored from me. I'm only here to encourage. Two days is an achievement. I want her to know that. So this is Trisha sourcing out this information about this Twitter user that's like on her private page and using it against her publicly. So, disgusting tweets, disgusting tweets. So, she has tweeted out something else, uh, which is about her favorite headline. So, she was talking about the fact that, you know, basically she's on so many news headlines and there's so many news articles talking about her, which is, in reality, they're all, like, talking shit about her. So then she said, before I block anyone for being negative, I always go through their profile. 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going through some dark stuff. So this is literally her continuing to weaponize this person's struggle against them now like, publicly. I don't always reply, but when I do, I'll be praying for them. And if it's a desperate cry, I'll let them know that I'm here and I see them and they'll get through it. So then we go on and Trisha is continuing to tweet out a, a bunch of news articles about her, I think trying to prove that she's popular. And then someone tweeted Daniel Perez saying, we need a lullaby song from Trisha. And she basically said, wow, okay, I know we're always in sync because they're friends, um, but this is freaky. We are literally naming the song this, it says lullaby, and we're working on it for the baby. We just came up with the title today. My co-writer and producer just sent over the first cut today, The Universe. So this is Trisha's way of soft releasing or soft announcing or soft whatever that she is coming out with an album for her baby filled with lullabies and I can only imagine the nightmares that that will give infant children all around the world. Alright, so she said, I've always, um, I'm always doing words of affirmation, telling him how much I love him and adore him and would do anything for him to Moses. I cry once a day telling him how thankful I am for him. Girl, we don't need to be going above and beyond with the lies right now. We can, like, keep it at a chill level. Fuck me, you're down on your knees, you're sobbing, you're crying, like, He's more of an actions person. It took me a while to be like, why aren't you saying how much you love me? When in reality, he was showing me it in so many little and big ways. I just wasn't used to his kind of love language before. So again, this is Trisha Paytas trying to prove that she is in fact in a loving marriage. So then she tweeted and said, Giving gifts has always been my love language. That's how I show people I love them, but it's not always the recipient's love language. Like, Moses would rather have cuddles than a new shirt. And I never knew mine till I met Moses and he started doing so much for me. So, hold on. My mom texts me that she's going to bed. Night, love you. Um, good night, mom. So, she's talking here about different love languages. Then she said, I used to be so uncomfortable or feel guilty that would um, do so much around the house and I would always go above and beyond and be helpful. What people call assistant is acts of service and I never knew how that was a love language before. So basically she's saying that Moses doing all of her work is just because, you know, it's a love language. Fuck me, I need to get one of them, Trisha. Him making me breakfast in the morning. Like, this is just so much like trying to prove that you're like in love with him, right? You did not have to do this when you were with Jason. You were not telling us every day what he does for you, or like how you feel about everything he does for you, like, damn ah. Him making me breakfast this morning is something I would never ask or expect, he just does it. Like, girl, okay, alright, what are you, like, what's the aim, what are you trying to prove? Are you trying to prove that he loves you, are you trying to prove that uh, you love him, are you trying to prove that you're both in a happy relationship, are you trying to prove that, like, what are you trying, what's the, the, the aim here to continue talking about, like, Moses does so much for you and people are misinterpreting it. If they misinterpret it, it shouldn't matter because he's actually doing it and you care for it or whatever the bullshit you're saying is, right? And I fall more and more in love with him every day because every day he puts in so much effort to make sure I'm okay and I just get overwhelmed that I fall in love with him so, so, so much. All right, so then she went on to tweet and said, unrelated but related. After meditating, I went back to bed and Moses wasn't there. Like, girl, have another personality trait other than Moses. This is like whenever you broke up with Jason and you struggled to find identity for like five years because that was who you were, Jason, and you're doing it again with Moses. He came back 20 minutes later with homemade breakfast. Like, fuck me, Jesus, who are you proving that you... He came back later with breakfast wraps in bed. I posted on my Instagram story just so you can go check. Last time he did this was on Valentine's Day. Today was no special occasion. People who love to jab and say my husband is my assistant make me feel so sad for them that their partner doesn't do special things for them or 
translated everything for them. That was me in every relationship before this one. He has his own company, he runs full time, as in he does a couple paintings here and there, um, and he doesn't sell them, he just puts them up in Trisha's fucking beauty room, and does so much to support me. Anyways, I don't always tweet these thoughtful things he does for me every day because of the annoying assistant comments, but fuck it, give haters one more thing to obsess about. I may be a lot of things, but boring is not one of them. I'm laying in bed having the laziest day ever, if you couldn't tell. I got time on my hands, and Twitter is on my mind. Alright, well that was a lot of Trisha trying to prove to us that Moses does in fact spend time with her. Great. Fun. I'm happy for you? I, question mark? I think that's the appropriate response, I think. Anyways, muckers, I love you and I'll see you in my next one. I'm bye. Mwah.